Hi guys and welcome to the latest episode of The Forge. The whole point of this series is to help young people develop their skills and voices as writers. Remember, the whole point of writing is it's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be liberating and without barriers unless you put them there yourself. In this episode, I am going to discuss how young writers should focus on writing what they know to develop as authors. Firstly, if you haven't done so already, please go down there and click on the subscribe icon and the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on any future content I put out. And before you leave, please click the like button as well to share this video around. Secondly, just down in the description box below, I've added a link to the creative writing blog on my website. If you're a young writer aged between 16 and 25, and you would like to appear in my Typecast Young Writers blog, contact me on scott at sgfiction.co.uk to inquire about being interviewed for the blog. Now enough of all that, let's get started. As writers, we commonly hear the expression, write what you know. This is something that I found very hard to do as a young writer. I wanted to explore every aspect of my imagination. I wanted to write about crazy things that I thought would be fun. I didn't want to write about what I knew because my life growing up in Belfast and Northern Ireland was not exciting in the slightest. All I could think about was writing stories similar to those of my favourite authors and like the movies that I saw on DVD or at the cinema. Now many of you guys out there may feel similarly to how I did back then, but now I'm older, I've found a way that young writers can utilise that overused phrase of write what you know. Tip number one is to write what you know when thinking about how characters interact when speaking. Yes, if your story is set in the area that you live, you can directly write how people around you speak. However, when you want to explore a setting different to where you live, you may not be able to do that. What you can do is use what you know to consider how people interact when they speak and how they behave when having conversations in general. When you're comfortable in a group of friends, you will interact differently to when you are in a formal setting. This is what we can practice when we are writing what we know. And here is exercise number one. Think of your group of friends and consider how you interact with them. You can be in a small group or one-to-one -one with your best friend, it really doesn't matter. I want you to think of the body language you use as well as the conversation you have when with them in a casual setting. Write this down as organically as possible. If you can be true to yourself, you can be true to what you know. This will help when writing characters who are in a casual setting with friends just like you imagined you were. Exercise number two is similar to exercise number one, but from a slightly different angle. Put yourself into a situation where you're meeting someone for the first time, or you're in a more formal setting, like talking with a teacher or in a job interview. I want you to think of the body language that you would use, as well as the conversation that you would have in the situation that is less casual. Again, write this down as organically as possible. Being true to yourself means being true to what you know. This will help in writing characters who are in more awkward situations as well as more formal settings in the stories that you write. Tip number two is to write what you know in relation to creating and describing a setting. When we write, having a setting that is realistic and believable as possible helps transport our readers from their world into ours. There is no doubt that vivid, detailed descriptions and concrete places help when constructing settings for our stories. Again, this is great if our story is set where we live because we can simply walk in the footsteps of our characters. On the other hand, 
When we create an imaginary setting, that can be difficult. What we can do is use the world around us to practice what we write. We can use the real world that we explore on a daily basis to develop how we write our descriptive detail as well as considering what detail we should include and that which we should leave out. Here is exercise number three. We are all able to access a setting that is real when we go for a walk, a run or a drive. There is a wealth of descriptive detail around us. All we have to do is look for it and utilise it to the best of our ability. Go out for a walk and open up all your senses to the world around you. Do what you can to simply observe and not focus on one thing in particular. Sometimes as artists and writers, we can miss what is right in front of us by preoccupying our minds with other distractions. Simply walk around and observe. That's it. Then when you go home, write down what you remember from your walk, trying to include as much detail as possible from as many of your senses as you feel appropriate. All you are doing here is describing the world that you know. If you can do that, it can help you describe many settings. Exercise number four is where we try to use exercise number three in a different context. Go online and search for images of a setting of your choice. It can be a New York subway or a coastal view off the coast of Northern Ireland. It doesn't matter. Think of what would jump out at you in the image and how you would describe it, like you did with your walk in exercise three. If you wrote what you knew in exercise three, you could look at the image and consider what things would stand out to you and also what you would pretty much ignore. This is not easy and it can take some practice, so allow time to get used to exercise for if you do try it at home. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Forge where we considered how writing what we know can help us develop our writing. The whole point of this series is to get young writers to develop their skills and their voices as a writer. Writing is supposed to be fun guys, so remember that. Make sure it is liberating and without barriers unless you put them there yourself. If you've enjoyed watching this episode, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and click the bell and thumbs up icons to give the video a like. If you have any ideas for future episodes, please email me at scott at sgfiction.co.uk and suggest your ideas. I would love to hear them. Again, thank you so much for watching and giving up your time. I'll see you again soon.